John 1, 10. In to cosmo ein, kai ha cosmos di autu egenita, kai ha cosmos autan uk egno. Translation, and here we're continuing to talk about the true light, the logos, the second person of the triune God, and here it's implied that, that we're continuing to speak about him, so it's he. He was, right, we've seen that ain over and over again as the third singular imperfect indicative of the verb a me. He was in the world, and the world through him came about, right? He, he created through the, through the agency of the divine logos, the second person of the triune God, the entire created order came into existence. The world through him came about. Agenitas, of course, again from genomai. We see a spelling change in the stem because it's a second heiress. It's a second heiress, middle indicative, third person singular. The world through him came about and, and you'll notice many English translations will translate this with but or yet, just from the context, there's a contrast going on, but in the Greek it is just a chi here. And the world knew not him. The world did not know him. That egno, if you ever see gnu, if you ever see a gnu and you don't know what it's from, it's probably from Gnosko. It's probably from Gnosko. Gnosko will often reduce down to zero vowel gradation, meaning you'll just have gnu uh, there. And uh, maybe you memorized the second aorist, egnon, right? Egnon, egnos, egno, egnomen, egnota, egnoson, right? That's just the, it's, it's hard for students because that omega ending, they think it's first person singular, but it's not, right? This is a second aorist, active indicative, third person singular. The subject here is the world, right? That's, a, that's an it. It's a third singular. The world knew not him. The world did not know him.